Hotel Era Sierra Belmont has been newly appointed as Vice President of Atmosphere at the luxury ski resort in Aspen owned by her father, Beauregard. Despite having no interest in the business Sierra could not break his heart and decline his offer when he flies her all the way there. Her first morning she is welcomed by a group of creme de la creme employees knocking at her door. The group is led by Terry Carver, from Guest Services. Sierra's father has asked him to work as her assistant while she's here. She ushers them in while on a call with her influencer boyfriend Tad Fairchild, who is trying to reason with her about coming clean to her father about her disinterest. Sierra counters that her dad thinks this is the perfect career for her. Although she does have reservations about the position, Vice President of Atmosphere does not even sound like a real job. She suspects that he just made it up to give her something to do which isn't a good thing exactly. She has it bad already, all people can think of when they look at her is the spoiled daughter of Beauregard Belmont, the hotel magnate. And she isn't even spoiled, she whines as a spoonful of caviar is put into her mouth along with a cool glass of rose. She pleads with Tad for help as her newly appointed stylist holds two outfits for her to choose from. Tad has got a plan, since she's lucky enough to be dating one of Hype Magazine's top social influencers, he's first going to take care of her hacked social accounts. After lunch with her father, he offers to hit the slopes and snap some content for both of their accounts. This comes as news to Sierra. Up until then, Tad had always wanted to keep their relationship private. Well, maybe it's time they let the world in on it. Could be a way of boosting her number of followers. It will prove to her father that she can have a career as an influencer too. The plan does sound promising to Sierra. After all, all she wants is for people to remember her for more than just her last name. While out skiing Beauregard is approached by Jake Russell, the owner of a small bed and breakfast in town with the name North Star Lodge. Jake has some business to discuss with Beauregard and he challenges Jake to a ski race to get an audience with him. After a close call though, Beauregard ends up winning the race. They take a walk down the hotel as Jake tries to bring up the subject. The mind-blowing interior of the hotel looked like something out of SpaceX. The place is incredible, a true world-class skiing destination. He pitches the idea that although Belmont's place is a world-class skiing destination, not everybody can afford world-class. He shows him studies about how 70% of beginners learn to ski at smaller resorts, like North Star. And as they become better, more accomplished skiers, they move up to mega resorts like Belmont's. Cutting in his carefully curated speech Beauregard replies that what Jake is asking is for him to invest in small resorts like North Star to make sure that the cycle keeps happening. A little taken aback Jack nods his head in affirmation. Beauregard offers him hot cocoa as one of his stewardesses brings it in. Jake hands him the folder containing numbers for a cost-effective upgrade, a high-speed lift, and a spa with a hot tub and sauna. But Beauregard returns the folder with a cavalier approach. He apologizes, citing his investors holding him accountable for any new investments. Jake is crestfallen, this had been his very last hope to save North Star. He shares the sad news with his friend on the phone. Sierra is just walking in the lobby searching for Ted when Jake quite literally runs into her spilling hot cocoa all over her Valniagi jumpsuit. Jake apologizes profusely, even offering to pay for her dry cleaning before Tad shows up shooing him away. Sierra and Tad finally sit down for lunch with her dad. Beauregard tries to make small talk with Tad asking about his business which to him didn't sound much more than a sales job. He asks him how long they've been together. Tad has been dating Sierra for almost a year but Beauregard fails to see any gravity in their relationship. Jake returns to his lodge to find his mother Alejandra and daughter Avi in the lobby ready to head out. On his inquiry, Avi reminds him about the Christmas wish tree in town that her mother used to take her to every year. This year the duty lies on Grandma's shoulders who asks Jake to join in with them. As fun as the idea sounded to Jake, he has some guests that want a sleigh ride so he promises Avi a snow check for this time. But he asks Avi to do him a favor and put in a good word with Santa for him. A legend recorners Jake voicing her suspicion that things didn't go as he had hoped. Beauregard is getting ready to leave for a business trip when Sierra seeks him out, needing to talk to him. Though her dad sits down to give her his undivided attention Sierra couldn't bring herself to tell him her true intentions about the job he's got for her. They end up reminiscing about her mother when Sierra spots the snow globe that her mother had bought for her dad in Gstaad. The miniature girl statue inside reminded her of Sierra. Beauregard is surprised Sierra remembers the little souvenir, she was only five when her mother passed away. But Sierra remembers her all right, she remembers her perfume, her laughter, how she used to brush her hair. Even the hotel reminds her so much of her mom. She still misses her dearly. They hug each other goodbye and Beauregard promises to be back before Christmas Eve. Sierra asks him to try not to worry too much about her as she'll be in good hands with Tad. Tad picks up Sierra in his cherry red Maserati with a bike sled hooked behind. Instructing Terry that she does not want to be disturbed while she's with Tad, Sierra goes up to a mountaintop for a photo shoot to announce their relationship to their followers on social media. Tad has a spot picked up from one of the top off-trail skiers in the country, it's a pretty secluded spot. Sierra does not know how to ski and Tad reassures her that she doesn't need to ski. It's all smoke and mirrors in the world of social media. Amidst their ride on the snowmobile Tad's phone loses signal for the GPS location of the spot and he decides to wing it from there on. 
Tad's search leads them to a dangerous point of no entry, albeit the two are completely unaware of the risk. Once they reach a steep mountain corner Tad drops down on his knees and proposes to her. Sierra eagerly accepts the proposal when suddenly the weather starts to turn. The harsh wind causes Sierra, who was wearing skis, to lose balance. She falls from the top of the mountain, is separated from Tad, and hits her head on a tree. Unconscious, Sierra is found by Jake who was passing by the lowland spot on his sleigh with a couple from his lodge. Jake radio signals the ski patrol for Code 3 and Sierra is taken to a hospital. Her examination at the hospital clears her physically with just a minor concussion, but Sierra loses her memory due to the accident and the hospital staff is unable to verify her identity. The staff didn't find any identification on her and the sheriff ran her fingerprints in the database and couldn't find a match, which could mean that she never got arrested or ever been employed. He puts her on the missing persons list but since it's the holidays it could take a while, until someone comes looking for her or until she remembers something. Jake offers the amnesiac Sierra a place at his bed and breakfast hotel, the North Star Lodge until she can remember who she is or someone comes to claim her. Sierra is skeptical at first to go along with the stranger but when the sheriff vouches for Jake and the doctor advises it best to get back into day-to-day -day life Sierra is left with little choice. Meanwhile, Tad lands into an opposite speck of trees though he does not sustain any major injuries or memory loss. With no cell reception and a dead battery, he is left with few options. He trudges through the snow until he finds a secluded cabin in the woods. He takes shelter there with a recluse Ralph, who takes him to town on foot the next day. Jake and Alejandra help Sierra settle into a new room with a few necessary items from the hotel's lost and found. When she wakes up the next morning, Sierra tries to convince herself that the day before had all been just a dream. The mediocre amenities of the bedroom and the ruckus outside knock her back to reality. As she contemplates her outfit for the day Avi comes to see her, she introduces herself to the lady who does not remember who she is. Sierra is heartened by the little girl's antics and asks her for a blow dryer. Avi takes her to her room where she introduces her to some of her favorite companions, her toys. After taking the name Sarah from a stuffed lamb Sierra and Avi head to the main room for breakfast. Avi introduces Sarah to her dad and grandma who offer her breakfast but Sierra assures them that she can fend for herself. Which turns out to be a total disaster as she does not even know how to turn a stove on. Watching her struggle Alejandra whispers to Jake that she does not seem from around here. Her mannerisms and antics feel too elite and spoiled. Jake voices his suspicions about having met her before though he cannot put a finger on the where and when. At the Belmont Resort Hotel security raid Sierra's suite after no news from her for the past 24 hours. They discovered her unturned bed and a bouquet of roses with a note from Tad. A legend jots down another cancellation at the lodge, Jake worries that at this rate they won't be able to hold the fort for much longer. They can't even afford housekeeping as is. Sierra stops by the reception desk to ask a legend if there are any calls for her yet. She cannot reconcile her mind to the idea that no one is out looking for her. Alejandra suggests that she should focus on getting her memories back and one way to do that is if she did normal, everyday things. So Sierra decides to help Jake and his family at the lodge in hopes of getting her memory back. Her struggles get painstakingly real as she doesn't know how to perform the most mundane of chores like making a bed or doing laundry, or even cleaning. Her misfires are a source of great aggravation for Jake who is already juggling much in life at the moment. So when the washing machine goes dysfunctional due to excess detergent Jake snaps. Dismayed at her constant failures, Sierra goes off for a walk, ending up at the stable where Jake's horse Balthazar resides. She unloads her guilt-ridden conscience telling him that she feels pretty useless as she can't even perform the most basic tasks correctly. Jake, who has been listening to her talk, comes out to help her fetch some wood for a fire. He apologizes for his rudeness earlier but Sierra isn't just sad because of that. It has been two days and nobody's come looking for her. She feels like a piece of unclaimed luggage. Jake reassures her that his family must be doing all they could to find her. To cheer her up, he offers to take her to the Christmas market downtown where there's a big street fair happening that night with lots of people. Maybe somebody would recognize her there. They walk the street of the marketplace but nothing in particular rings any bell with Sierra. Avi directs them over to a trinket shop next to the roasted chestnut stand. Jake shares that Avi is very excited about Christmas, she's taken after his wife Carla in that regard. It's been rough for them these past couple of years, he wasn't sure they'd stay here much longer. He thought about moving back to the city where he used to have a skiing travel business. But North Star had been in Carla's family for three generations, her father gave it to them as a wedding gift and Jake instantly fell in love with the place. So now he does not have the heart to sell it. But people these days like the new resorts, all the flashy stuff, the bells, and whistles. Whereas, he still thinks there's something special about simple things like home-style meals, hot chocolate by the fireplace, and a home away from home. Avi calls them over to look at a sleigh that has caught her eye. The old man dressed as Santa comes over praising Avi for her fantastic taste in sleighs. He tells how that particular one is a classic piece, handmade, and runs like wind. Jake leans over to have a closer look at the vehicle but the price tag on the things renders it out of his league. 
The old man invites them to look around to see if anything else attracts them then hands Sierra a Christmas-themed snow globe. The trinket jogs a foggy memory in her mind. Noticing her interest Jake decides to buy it for her as an early Christmas gift. They hurry over to the town square to witness the Summit Springs annual Christmas tree lighting. Despite her continued struggle, Sierra bonds with Jake and his family as she works on improving and helping around the lodge. She develops a special connection with Avi after she finds out that she lost her mother a couple of years ago and feels sympathy for her, due to losing her own when she was younger and starts to trigger memories. Amidst these small snippets of jogged up memories, Sierra adjusts to a normal life. A few days pass by before Sierra comes across a dismayed Allegendra sitting by the fireplace in Jake's office. Watching Sierra enter Allegendra quickly dab a napkin at the corner of her eye. Sierra asks asks her why she's so upset and at first, Allegendra tries to brush away her concern by chalking the tears off as mere nostalgia. She is looking through an old memory book of photos containing names cards, pictures, and notes from the various guests that had resided in the lodge for over 30-some years. She later gives in and shares that the hotel is struggling so this might very well be their last Christmas here. Instructing Sierra to put it back inside Jake's desk drawer, Allegendra leaves to pick up Avi. When Sierra goes to put the book away she finds a treetopper angel in Jake's drawer. Jake walks into the office just then. He catches Sierra holding it and explains how they never got a chance to put it over the tree since he and Carla bought it together. Now he does not want to get rid of it nor could he bring himself to put it on the tree. So here it sits, out of sight but not out of mind. He is getting late to leave for the toy drive, a Summit Springs tradition for families that are having a rough patch that Christmas. The idea seems sweetly appealing to Sierra and she volunteers to come along. At the community center, Sierra is introduced to Louise, another volunteer there. Louise just couldn't stop gushing praises about Jake. With the amount of time and money that Jake Russell donates to the community, they wouldn't know what to do if Jake wasn't around. She wishes Summit Springs could give back to him in his time of need. Upon their return to the lodge Jake and Sierra find themselves standing right underneath the mistletoe. As is tradition Jake's first instinct is to lean in to kiss her. He catches himself just in time, this cannot be a good idea. Sierra doesn't remember anything of her life, she might be with someone. Their involvement together might just complicate an already convoluted situation. The next morning Sierra wakes up with an agenda. She finds Avi and Allegendra crafting in the lounge and shares the idea that she's just come up with. A party to raise funds for the North Star. Allegendra is bouncing off the walls at the idea but Avi thinks Sierra should talk to her dad before planning anything further. Jake does not like the idea. He downright refuses to host any party to raise money. Sierra tries to sell it as a Christmas flashback party for the guests from the past. But it does not matter how she tries to camouflage the idea, Jake isn't having it. He is living in Summit Springs and doesn't want people living here to think that he needs a handout. Maybe it is better to just let the place go. Sierra tries to reason that the lodge has got countless unforgettable memories and Jake snaps that maybe it's good for him to forget some of those. After all, what does Sierra know of memories, when she has got none of her own? Ever since she's come into his life she's made him feel things that he never thought he could feel again. So now he does not want another set of unforgettable memories attached to this place, even with somebody like her. A legend refines an upset Jake cooped up in his office. She understands that Christmas is a difficult time for him and this year especially so due to the connection he's developed with Sarah. She advised him to let go of the weight that he has carried for all this time. He's held this family together for so long. But they are all fine now. Sierra finds Allegendra in the lounge and tells her that she's decided it's best for everyone's sake that she leave. Avi, who is sitting nearby carving snowflakes out of paper, is distressed to hear that. She rushes over to Sierra's side, she can't leave, Avi had thought she was going to be with them for Christmas. Jake steps out of his office and then holds the Christmas angel in his hand. He asks Sierra to stay and help him put the Christmas tree together. The family sends out Christmas card invites for the party at North Star Lodge on Christmas Eve. At the Belmont, the hotel staff doesn't think to look for Sierra and Tad as they believe that they are away on a trip. Beauregard returns from his trip where he finds out that Sierra has been missing for four days. He instantly puts the hotel security for deep scrutiny of the hotel grounds and informs the sheriff, who has just retrieved Tad and Ralph. Beauregard is at the sheriff's office when the officer brings Tad and Ralph in. They have to arrest Ralph for poaching once again but Tad isn't having it. To him, Ralph is a hero who weathered the snow and storm and got him to safety while keeping Tad warm and fed. Beauregard intervenes in his monologue asking Tad about his daughter whom Tad has presumed to have gotten back to the hotel all this time. The sheriff connects the dots between Beauregard, Tad, and Sierra's story. On the day of the party, Sierra raids her meager belongings for something appropriate to wear that evening. A Allegendra comes to the rescue, she has taken the liberty to buy an outfit for Sierra and hopes that it would meet her approval. Sierra is touched by her kind gesture but Allegendra is just paying the debt that she owes her, for making Jake smile, he hasn't been this happy since Carla's passed away. The beautiful crimson cocktail dress that Allegendra has gifted Sierra fits perfectly. If anything, it only further brightens the red in Sierra's hair, as she walks down the staircase into the lobby where the family was awaiting their guests for the night. 
Jake isn't able to take his eyes off her for a moment then proposes the two of them take a last-minute tour of the preparations made. While inspecting the dance floor Sierra offers him a dance and Jake takes her up on it. They move slowly to the beat and Sierra voices that she has a good feeling about the night. Jake couldn't help his cynical thoughts hoping that nobody would show up. His cynical thoughts are at a loss as the party starts when the whole town comes together to support the North Star Lodge. Guests pitch in with checks and the mayor breaks the news that the Summit Springs Town Council has put forth the proposal to declare North Star Lodge a historic site. Overwhelmed by the town's response Jake could hardly speak. He couldn't however let the moment go by without thanking Sierra, who has changed the way Jake sees a lot of things including himself. Amidst the round of applause that goes around the crowd Tad and Sierra's father rush in to take her home. The sudden influx of information and familiar faces jogs Sierra's mind up. She remembers the ski accident, Tad's proposal, and her father. And so at long last her memory is restored. There's one more decision to be made as Beauregard ushers Sierra to the exit door. Avi runs over to give her a parting hug and Sierra explains to her how she's got to go home now. On Christmas Day, Sierra wakes up before her morning call. Much to the staff and Terry's surprise, she does her chores too. As the shock wears off, Terry informs her that Mr. Fairchild has set up a press conference for her in two hours to suit the media attention about her ordeal. Jake and his family watch the press conference where Sierra Belmont heartily thanks him for his kindness and hospitality recommending the North Star Lodge to anyone who's watching. Tad breaks the news of their engagement and also that the two of them would be taking a short trip to an undisclosed location after the conference. Avi is sad, her Christmas wish didn't come true after all. She had wished for her dad to find love. He takes such good care of all of them. She just wanted him to have someone who can take care of him too. Someone like Sarah. Jake pulls her up on his lap trying to reason with her that all of this is easier said than done. Avi asks him if he ever told her how much he likes her. Well, Jake hasn't, not in so many words. Avi gets off of his lap excitedly pulling him on his feet. They still had time, he could tell her now. The roads are closed at their end of the valley so Jake decides to take the snowmobile instead. But as luck would have it, the thing wouldn't start. Just then Avi spots the sled for the market sitting outside the shed. That's a serious surprise because Jake doesn't remember buying it, maybe it was a Legendra's doing. Tad and Sierra pack up to leave but not before she decides she will do things for herself going forward, and resigns from the position her father created for her realizing the hotel business is not for her. Her fear of his disappointment turns out to be void as Beauregard confesses that he couldn't be more proud than to watch her grow into her own person, with her own identity. At the North Star Legendra is swarming with phone calls for reservations mere moments after Sierra's press conference. She is elated that the place is sold out. At another stop on her journey to self-discovery, Sierra breaks off her engagement with Tad telling him that for the longest time, she had thought that she wanted this, but she doesn't. Shortly after the breakup as Tad gets into his limo to leave, Jake reaches the resort to confess his love to Sierra. Assuming her to be inside he stops the car running up to the passenger side window telling her that as strange as their circumstances may be he cannot let her leave without telling her that he's falling in love with her. Tad rolls the window down thanking Jake for his earnest confession and bidding him a happy Christmas before driving off. The old man dressed as Santa garners a confused Jake's attention, directing him to the back courtyard where Sierra stood appreciating the falling snow. Jake runs up to her, he had thought she was leaving with Tad. Sierra tells him about her change of plans to stay there without Tad. Jake thanks her for her recommendation which has resulted in North Star being sold out for the rest of the season. Sierra asks him if he'd need her help running the lodge especially since her dad has mentioned interest in investing in the place. She had told him that she would try to convince Jake throughout the holidays. That is if Jake wouldn't mind spending them with her. Jake pulls out the mistletoe that had gone unhonored in their lobby and reminds Sierra that they owe each other a kiss. They end with a very happy Christmas together.